I'm Ryuya from RayaX. Uh, RayaX is a blockchain startup based on Tokyo and working on Casper Research and supported by Ethereum Foundation grant. So today, I will talk about uh, my research on the security of Casper. So, you know, Casper, or consensus protocol, has two properties, safety and liveness. So the talk is divided into two parts, uh, safety part and the liveness part. So first, I want to introduce Casper is not that different from traditional protocols, and Casper FFG and the CBC is not that different also. So first, PBFT, Tendermint, and Casper FFG and CBC are all categorized into a synchronously safe consensus protocol. So I mean, safety does not require any timing assumptions. So basically, in these protocols, finality comes when sufficient number of validators is locked on the block. So let's start with Tendermint. So in Tendermint, um, uh, a block is called notarized when 2f plus 1 validators is bought on the block. So uh, here f is Byzantine fault threshold. And the block is finalized when its direct child block is notarized. And then when validator is bought for a notarized block, that validator is locked on the block. So he cannot vote for a conflicting block. So in this case, the first block is finalized. And here, the votes must be collected in on-chain. This is a really important point. So here, the reason why we can say the first block is finalized is we know that these validators voted for the, the second block knows, we know that this validator is locked because we know that the votes are on-chain, right? So this is why on-chain voting is very important for these, for these protocols. And the reason why finality comes when, only when its direct block is, is notarized is there might be some another block in the middle. And you know, we discussed locking is necessary for safety, but you know, if locking is too much, too much strong, it does not create some liveness property. So here we have some unlocking condition. So in Tendermint, a validator locked on a block is unlocked when he see a higher notarized block. So in this picture, I voted for two, but I'm, I'm unlocked because I see the new notarized block here. So let's start with the next is Casper FFG. The Casper FFG is fundamentally similar to Tendermint, but it's more like chain-based leaderless Tendermint. So in Casper FFG, we, don't, we do not finalize block we finalize checkpoints. So in this picture, we have blockchain, but we finalize on, say, every 50 blocks or every 50 slots block, right? So, yeah. And again, votes are still on-chain. And the difference between Tendermint is the fork choice itself is doing the similar law of leader. So in Tendermint, every validator vote for a block which is decided by the leader of that round. But in Casper FFG, it's a fork choice that do, do the, the, decides the view. And unlocking and locking is super similar to Tendermint. So in FFG case, they are unlocked when they see higher notarized or just justify the checkpoint. So finally, CBC Casper is also locking based consensus protocol, but the locking and unlocking is purely by the fork trace itself. So in CBC Casper, every message votes block must follow the fork choice. And in Tendermint or FFG, we included the votes on chain. But in CBC, we can do the same thing, but more flexibly we can allow the message to point to the every orphan vote or block. So in this picture, 
the block B is pointing to open block, but the reason is, um, okay, so, yeah, additional explanation. So in this case, this block is invalid because they know that the different chain is more heavier, so this is invalid. And the um, unlocking condition is super abstracted into uh, equivocation condition that every vote must include his previous message in its message. So in this picture, this block is invalid because he has previous message here, but does not include the on chain in, in, in message. So the similarity of CBC and FFG is that both is chain based. So every vote block is voting or supporting for the same ancestor, right? So in FFG, what 2.0, they include all from votes in on chain because they are supporting for the same checkpoints. This is also the same for CBC Casper, but it's more flexible way. So the exact finality condition is something I, I do not do not talk in this talk, but we finally finished our formal verification in EWHOL. It takes more than half a year, but you know it's a great job, I think. So yeah, pretty much summary is Tendermint, Casper FFG, and CBC is based basically based on some locking idea. And you know the difference comes from whether the locking is based on the notarized checkpoint or block or fork choice itself. So to move, I want to move to liveness, but liveness has a lot of design strategies. So I do not, cannot talk in this 20 minutes. So I, today I want to focus on 2.0 liveness. So basically in 2.0, liveness strategy is super simple. It just LMD ghost plus Casper FFG. So LMD ghost is a variant of ghost in which where the latest message is only counted. So in this picture, um, the traditional longest chain loop, this chain that is a head. In normal ghost, this chain is a head. But in LMD ghost, we only count the latest message. So the, the third chain is a head. So to talk about the liveness based on LMD ghost, we need to define when the chain converges. And in LMD ghost, a block is not orphaned when the chain is supported by more than majority of honest votes. So in this example, say there's 100 total validators and um, the blue chain is supported by more than 51 votes. In this case, whatever adversary do, the top chain does not reorganize. So this is a convergence condition of LMD ghost. But this cannot be observed by you know, protocol foreign validators. This is why we want Casper to detect finality. But for liveness analysis, this is a convergence condition. Yeah, so before I introduce an uh, attack on LMD ghost, I want to introduce some fairness property on fork choice. So in basically, in any consensus protocol, we want some property called fairness. So I mean, any player cannot increase their power against their stake or hash power. But there's something break this property called saving strategy. So adversary can skip their votes and later use their votes to free prop. This does not work in longest chain because, so say we divide into time into slots, six seconds or 10 seconds, and every three block or vote is by is adverse for adversary. And in this case, adversary is hold or save every block. But in longest chain, we can add some validity condition that every block or vote cannot extend the future block. 
So here, after some network failure, we cannot use the saved boat to prevent liveness here. But in Ghost, every boat does not expire. So here, there's a huge two fog from, from early days. And, but you can use this save, save the bro, save the boat in Ghost. Because in Ghost, the fork choice is based on every best children selection on each height. So every vote does not expire. So this turns into creating a new attack on LMD Ghost, which I call decoy flip prop attack. So basically, what I want to do is to flip every vote into another chain and go back to another chain and continue. The difference, the big difference in normal ghost and LMD ghost is the flip of, of votes decreases the score. In longest chain or normal ghost, some score of a chain monotonically increasing. And every liveness proof is based on that property. But in LMD ghost, we cannot have that property. This is the simulation I have. So imagine that two chain, red chain and blue chain, and we continuously flip flop just before the chain converges. And the result is um, the necessary saving which the adversary needs to prepare exponential decreases against the adversarial power. And for some parameter, 33% attacker can prevent liveness for 100 epoch, it's like a few hours, or 10 hours, by five epochs of savings. And for more big adversary, it takes much longer to, to chain, for the chain finalize. Yeah, um, small mitigation of this attack is FMD ghost. It's a variant of LMD ghost to mitigate this saving strategy. So in LMD ghost, we count every vote, every old vote, if it is latest. But in FMD ghost, we only count a vote from the current epoch or the previous epoch. Um, someone say that it's kind of introduced a new synchrony assumption on consensus, but it's not that true. Because in 2.0 case, that FFG is decoupled from the chain, so the synchrony assumption does not change. But here still, decoy flip flop is possible because we can have one epoch of savings. So this starts uh, pretty much a new question that why LMD ghost in the first place compared to non-LMD variant of ghost? Especially there's no Shibishi Casper in 2.0 for now, so it's a bit easy to manipulate the fork choice. Another interesting topic, which I don't cannot talk today, is flip-flopping LMD ghost in Shibishi Casper. Because in Shibishi Casper, every message is enforced to follow the fork choice. So the analysis gets a bit complicated, but basically it mitigates that flip-flop strategy. So a bit note on incentives. So um, you might say savings can be detected and thrashed, but um, basically, to punish liveness failure is, as I explained by the Vitalik in this morning, is different, uh, difficult to distinguish between no malicious failure because it just might honest node just get down. So in 2.0 has some incentive mechanism to punish liveness failure called inactivity leak, but it's just kind, mild punishment. So the current parameterization with decoy free flop attack, 33% um, attacker, attacker can prevent finality for a few days with 1% cost of the stake. And you know, liveness attack sometimes has a lot of reward because there's a lot of layer to solutions in which there's some challenge period. And if they cannot, if they can censorship on the flood proof, in Plasma and Lightning, adversary can get a bunch of money from the layer two construction. So I think 
it's a new question to how to analyze incentive compatibility in liveness failure. So I think I have a time, so I quickly introduce some attack on Casper FFG, which is founded by uh, last year. So in FFG, the original FFG, removing the leader in kind of bad way, because so these squares are not blocks, it's checkpoints. And remember that unlocking rule in Casper FFG is observation of higher notarized checkpoint. And so in this case, imagine there's 100 validators, and this checkpoint is close to two thirds, but it's not notarized yet. But adversary can justify this checkpoint arbitrary anytime. So in this situation, the fork choice favors this side of the chain, so creating a new checkpoint which is close to the, the notarization, but exactly the same that at the time, adversary flip the head of the fork choice in that, in that way. And in high synchrony network, adversary can continue this attack forever. So why this does not happen in Tendermint? It's simply because leader decides the view of the current round. So what we should do is to have some sort of stickness property in FFG. So there's a lot of construction to prevent this attack. It's one idea is to not allow the change of the view in the middle of the epoch. For example, you do not allow any new justified checkpoint if it's in the middle of the epoch. Yes, I think it's uh, finished. Thank you. <laughs>